multi-clock properties, uh, we can use as many clocks as we like in a property, in fact. So here we've got, uh, we're using neg edge of clock one for sequence one. So sequence one would be defined without a clock typically. So it's using neg edge of clock one for that sequence. But then we've got this next cycle implication operator. Okay. And we've got a different clock now. So seek two, again, would be defined without a clock, but it will be using pos edge clock two. So what does the next cycle mean? Well, what it means is the that once this sequence completes, sequence one, we wait until the next pos edge of clock two before we start evaluating the sequence. And when we evaluate this sequence, we're using pos edge clock two. So this is called clock flow. We're using neg edge clock one until we observe another clock. And then that's what we use. Keep going to the right until we see another clock. Now it becomes more complicated if you put same cycle implication. What does same cycle mean if you've got two different clocks here? Um, well, what it means is that it synchronizes the last cycle of the first clock, which is the one I'm talking about on the left-hand side of the implication, to the same delta cycle if you're using simulation. Okay, so so basically, if we complete sequence one in the same delta cycle here, if sequence two is it starts, then we will start evaluation from that point, the same delta cycle. If not then what we do is wait until the next clock. So in this case, yeah, these, these clocks could be different. We could have uh, clock one and clock two here. And because of clock flow, when we reach this point here, so the, the hash hash one means one delay of neg edge clock one. So pos edge clock three here, that's what clock we're using to evaluate sequence three with. So this becomes very complicated to understand. With formal tools, you know, this, this thing about data cycles, they don't exist in formal, it's all cycle based. So you have to be really careful with multi-clock properties. There is no standard way of approaching multi-clock properties. Okay, so there is no standard methodology because everybody wants to do something different. There's many different issues to understand and only you will understand them. So what people normally do is use specific clock domain crossing tools to do these evaluations rather than trying to do this inside of SVA. Okay, you would use a specific tool to do it rather than try and write these asserts in SVA because they're so hard to understand and get right.